What it do, guys, and welcome to episode six of Utre the podcast. We are your hosts, El Chazelle in the building, and Makita J. Utre is the podcast where we talk about heavy ass topics with a light hearted twist. Before we get it in, let's rep our sponsors. Seventh Dimension is more than an online store, it's a revolution full of magic, ancestors, and good health. What's up, guys? It's Makita from Utre the podcast. Here to tell you about Seventh Dimension. You've never seen anything like them, y'all. Their goal is to help you gain a deeper understanding of spirituality, sexuality, and overall health naturally. In addition to being a shop where you can purchase gemstone yoni eggs, herbal baths, custom candles with the whole herbs in them, by the way. They're also an interfaith ministry and spiritual center that offers counseling, job assistance, kids programs, homeless care, tarot readings, astrology charts, and dream interpretations. And let me tell you, their readings are spot on. On top of all of that, they're also a yoga studio offering $5 pop-up yoga in the Sanford Lake Mary area. Get your own on and get your health right naturally with their huge selection of herbals and get some crystals to feng shui your crib visit their website to learn more about everything they do at seventhdimension.com that's sv the number seven nth dimension.com all right guys before we jump into things i just have a quick announcement to make at the head of the show last week's winner of the seventh dimension 200th like contest that winner is Ross Al Ghul everybody check him out give him a thumbs up like his stuff add him as a friend check him out say hey Ross thank you very much for liking our homepage or our company's homepage but be sure that you visit our Facebook page facebook.com slash Utre podcast and give us a like as well guys you the man, Ross. Appreciate you are your brother. The man. Okay, so I guess we might as well just jump on into things. So, the hot topic on the streets for the past maybe week: the Tupac movie, All Eyes on Me. All eyes on me. Roll up in the club. All eyes on me. We saw it opening night. That was opening night, right? Oh uh, yeah. Yeah, we saw it opening night, June sixteenth. 1971, his birthday. Okay. Like, <laughs> I thought so. Wow. 71. Yeah, we should have looked up what. He'd have been 46. Yep. Yep. Happy be- belated birthday, Tupac. So, we thought it was good. Movie was awesome. I enjoyed it. You know, uh, it's gotten a lot of critics, the critiques by mm-hmm. the critics. You know, yeah. saying it wasn't this, it wasn't that, it wasn't. Wasn't and it was more detailed. It happened this more way. detailed. And he's, his life was very intricate and it should have been more stuff. Right. You know, and uh, the movie should have been what? Yeah, the movie was long enough. Movie? That's what I'm saying. It was long enough as it was. Yeah, like, man. what the hell did y'all want to add? But, you know, okay. But, I mean, I think pop, it was good. I would have fell asleep. No no lie. You know, it, it was it was a long ass That movie. was the only reason I was captivated. I... I Basically knew the story from a fan's point of view. Right. And just following along. And they told so much of the story, man. And the part I was waiting on, which I was really happy to see on how they would depict it and how it went down, was the part when he got out of the limousine and he shot those two undercover cops. Mm. Blasted their ass. Wow. That shit was dope. Yeah, I was surprised to see that too. Yeah. That, I, you right. know, I, I didn't think they would tell that, that part of the story, you know. Right, well, he was but, um, You right. know, they were dirty cops anyway. True. Both of their pistols were stolen out of the uh, police station that they mm-hmm. was working on. So, you know, they weren't shit. So, um, you know, uh, big up to Tupac. True, true. You know what I mean? For, he was um, a real. He, he, he was real. He was a rebel. He, he, you know, he did what he talked about. He was about that life. You know what I mean? Which a lot of people are. You know, I'm not saying go out there and, you know, kill a nigga and do some ignorant shit. But, right. you know, if you talk about it, be about it. Exactly. Period. Don't be talking you know? about what you heard. Right. I think the movie did really good. We thought the movie was good when we went to see it. Um, even when we went to get the tickets at the front, the girl in the front told us that the movie was doing a lot better. The turnout was a lot bigger than the management 
at the theater even thought it would be, which low key that offended me because how could you not? It's Tupac. Right. I mean, like seriously, girl, this is okay. I forget. Like, this man is world, he's, he's a worldwide figure. Right. You he's know, mythical. This, at this man point. is known in, in Japan, Australia, and in the in the fucking backwoods of Madagascar. People went crazy for his you freaking know? avatar at at Coachella that year. That's right. So, so anyways, leading the charge in the trend of criticizing the movie, leading the charge, of course, is none other than Jada Pinkett Smith, who immediately took to her Twitter the same day of the release. And started with, and I'll just go through a couple of her tweets real quick. Goddamn, Jada Pinkett, Miss Dick Cheeks. Whoa, I can't get it together. <laughs> Forgive me. My relationship uh, to Pac is too precious to me for the scenes in All Eyes on Me to stand as truth. Pac never read me that poem. I didn't know that poem existed until it was printed in his book. Pac never said goodbye to me before leaving for L.A. He had to leave abruptly and it wasn't to pursue his career. Um, it didn't say that in the movie. She didn't watch the movie. That's what it sounds like, right? You know, she, that's what it sounds if she, like. If she watched the movie, she wouldn't have saw, she would have saw he went to um, L.A., which they did depict in the movie. He went to L.A. because his mom was on drugs and she was basically probably having a hard time there paying the rent or whatever she had going on and she sent them to L.A. with some family members or some Black Panthers that she knew so they could stay there until she came and got, you know, so she could come there and get right. on their feet. Right. It had nothing to do with pursuing his career. Like, what is she talking no, about? No, she said it did not. He was not. It was not for him to pursue his career is what she said. Right. And it wasn't to pursue his career. It wasn't oh, so to he, pursue oh, okay. like his she's implying, career. She's right. Impl- <clears throat> she's implying that he went oh, to okay, L.A. to pursue his career. Right, right, right. right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yes. he didn't. In the movie, yeah, I got you. Yeah, and it didn't. I just wanted to read this last one because to me it just takes the cake. The reimagining of my relationship to Pac has been deeply hurtful. Then she goes on to like, no shade though, Cat Graham and, and Demetrius Ship Jr., if someone writes you a poem and you say you never saw it until it was in this book, that's like, I mean, that's like nor here, here or there. Like, obviously the poem was dedicated to you and that's how the man felt about you. So they tried to give, you know, give some volume to it. That's all it was. I mean, and every movie is not going to be 100%. It's a movie. They yeah. do things for effect, for, for effect. entertainment, to add to right. life. You know, but the body of the story in totality was a great story. It was, and it was it, the story was told from what I know from you know living and seeing there at the time, right? Yeah, I being remember. there at the time, ninety five, ninety six, ninety four. You know, you know, following Tupac's career, mm-hmm. being alive, yeah, being there. You know, and they grown, did good, they did a good job. Yeah, you know, they, they did, did a good, good job. job. Um, and Dem- Demetrius Ship Jr. Excellent job. First yeah. time actor. For fresh first from time the streets. Actor, yeah. He did though. But if he if he was already a solidified actor, I'd be like, uh, I don't know. But he did good. Though. He did good. And Cat Graham did good you know. as Jada. And in certain parts of the movie you could actually feel the Tupac spirit, man. Yeah. You know, you could feel those goosebumps kinda of rising up on your skin, man. And, yeah. And and, and I, I think he would have approved of this movie. What I wanted to do was get to um, L.T. Hutton's response to Jada. Uh, and basically what he had to say in response is really quick. So, upon hearing Miss Pinkett Smith's opinion of the movie, the producer L.T. Hutton had a response. And he basically said, quote, I'm kind of disappointed and just hurt by the accusations that it wasn't depicted or I can't remember the exact words said. But it all came from the truth in places of moments of her actual dialogue and ideas that Pac actually had. I wouldn't put anything in this film, and everybody watching the film, they'll tell you I was very responsible with everyone. And I think that's, yeah, well, that's pretty much the end of his quote there. But he's defending himself and saying that it's authentic. You know, everything right. that he put in the movie was something that he discussed with the people involved beforehand, conversations he's had with right. Pac, interviews, you know, all of his research, he, he claims, you know, to be legit. 
Um, but getting to what you previously brought up that I found interesting is the fact that, for one, the movie, they started making it, what, like 2011? And then sometime into that, that's when the whole lawsuit thing happened with, with his mom. Right. That you were bringing up. And, and you were saying about that. Oh, no, nah, just, you know, the lawsuit with his mom, um... I don't know what the lawsuit was really about. I don't know what she was trying to withhold. I don't know if she didn't want to be shown in the light that she was shown in. But, you know, she rose from the crack ashes. <laughs> she was basically she was a crackhead. <laughs> she, she was right. she, she, I mean he she said was, it in the song and she's yeah, talked about it in interviews know. so I'm not sure if it's something she's trying to hide was a black queen mama and even as a crack fiend mama you always was a black queen mama but yeah she, she, she was a crackhead so I don't know if it has anything to do with that um you know and she was a very volatile figure you know she mm-hmm. she you know I know people want to give her props, but I'm just being truthful. Like, you know, she wasn't the greatest mom, even though he did Dear Mama and dedicated that song to his mom, which I think was sort of political, you know, just like keep your head up and stuff like that. Because it, yeah, I actually saw an interview where she said that song was not solely for her. It was for her, but also for all mothers, correct. Coretta Scott King, uh, Betty Shabazz, right. so on and so and forth. And he, he wanted, it, it was better for PR purposes because you had... Um, What's the lady's name? Um, oh, Maxine Waters. Maxine Waters and the other chick. Um, sh- Jesus. We can look it up real quick. C. Dolores Tucker. Yeah, he, he was being, you know, they came at him hard. You know, they were coming at him in Congress about rap music and they were naming, you know, Tupac specifically. Yeah. You know, about calling women bitches and hoes and this, that, and the third. So he was trying to, you know, show a different side. You know what I'm saying? Because there is a different side. There's black queens, there's women, and That's there right. are. Bitches and hoes. Yeah, hey. There's you know a place for saying? everyone at the table. You know, hit dogs holler. Mm. If, you ain't a, if, you ain't hey. a, if you ain't a bitch and a hoe, hey. Yeah. You know, what does it mean to you? It don't got nothing to do with you. Don't have nothing to do Not with you. Not your time. You know? Yeah, well, they were upset. So, yeah, I mean, I don't know. The movie was good, and I think all the controversy isn't doing anything but giving it the press that it needs to get even bigger because we Hardly. did look it up, and it was, what, number three? Number two it was, was number Wonder three. Woman. Yeah, you know, it's hard number to one was in the, in, the, in the summer, you know. What was number one? Number one was Cars. <laughs> yeah. The fuck out of here. Disney, some Disney all shit. All right, Illuminati. Disney. Illuminati. <laughs> my soul and my body. Speaking of that. R.I.P. Prodigy. Illuminati want my mind, soul, and my body. Secret society. Trying to keep their... Yeah, most definitely Mom, been. Quite my strong. God. You guys, we tape on Tuesdays. So, right now, with us, it's, well, Tuesday, June 20th. So, yeah, we just heard the news a few hours ago. My goodness, our condolences to his family, his Rest fans, peace, brother. his, Rest you know, associates. Peace. Just, my gosh. Yeah. We'll get to the bottom of that too because I don't know. But another yeah, topic it's, it's for another still, it's show. Still <laughs> it's still developing. It's still See, developing. Still developing. Last I saw was he was being treated for sick cell, and he well, choked on an yeah. egg or something. That's I don't weird. know if that's the cause of death. Like really, guys. But that is the last headline y'all I saw. Y'all messed up bad in that shit today. Um, that's why people be TLT. looking at y'all with the side eye, Illuminati. So you know, if that is what happened, that is that that, that that's suspect. You know, I'm a conspiracy theorist. You know, I think most conspiracies, if you put the facts together, and it has continuity, I definitely you know, you know, can see uh, it, it, it happening. Mm. You know the way it's told, but um, yeah, you know, R.I.P. Brother, R.I.P. For real, that was kind of made today a little bit of a downer. <clears throat> well, back to pop. Yeah, so like I was saying though, all this talk and oh, this is inaccurate. Oh, and, you know, then you have other people coming out saying, "Oh, girl, bye." You know, it, it's accurate enough. It's good. It's pocket. Doesn't matter. Da da da. Right. You know, just roll with it. Like what's what's up? You know, and then you know. I'll have to admit, <clears throat> my initial reaction to hearing about her having something to say, I roll my eyes because it's like, girl, every time. I guess I'm going back to I think what was it, Oscars and Will Smith wasn't nominated for the Tell the Truth movie. Truth. 
Tell the truth. Yeah, tell the truth. Yeah. And she was all in her feelings about that and boycotted and wanted people to join her. And they were like, uh, nah. Nah. (laughs) So Uh -uh. that's what it brought to mind. So it was like, girl, not again. Can you please just... Get he, your cheeks fixed. Because Will, Will Smith wasn't nominated. And it's like, you know, just like Jamie. Maybe it wasn't good. Just like Jamie Foxx said, if you want to be nominated. Then you got to have an Oscar worthy performance. You got to have an Oscar worthy. Not give us free. Right. I mean, not give us free. I'm sorry, dude. Uh, tell the truth. Tell the truth. Tell the truth. Yeah, that's yeah. what Will Smith was saying in the movie. That was his, like, you know, in the, you know, I don't know. In the trailer, that was his, like, you know, moment. But whatever. <sighs> He felt so good about it. But yeah, but anyway, all the talk is not going to do anything again, but bring promote the movie. It's free promotion. But okay. one of the craziest things that came out, and it kind of it kind of sort of turned into a meme today, when Faison Love came out in that video, talking about it's Snoop's fault, because he right. had him fucked up in some gang shit. Right. Some crip shit. Okay, Faison. But, um, all right. Moving on. Yeah, it, obviously, I don't know if he, um, him and Faison got some type of beef because that was like left field for left me. Left field. Random and, you know, I, I know Faison's from L.A. and he's down with the, you know, you know. Um, big perm. Yeah, big perm. He, he's down with, you know, people in the hood and this, that, and the third. But, you know, it's so many theories on how Pac died from, you know, the FBI, CIA having pages and pages on him and follow him around from mm-hmm. Shug Knight wanting them kill from, um, you know, the guy who... Um, they beat up that night in Vegas, right? And um, you know, they came back and so supposedly retaliated. Um, you know, he had beef with Biggie and Puffy. Some people say Puffy put out the hit. You know, um, or some people even say Biggie put out the hit. So you know, as far as how he died, you know, this is a mystery. And you know, I say that I say that a lot. Just like you know, even with dealing with people in the streets, is you know when you when you do when you create you know, that type of havoc or, or you have that type of environment and that type of energy around you. And, you know, you might have beef with this one, that one, and the third and or enemies or, you know, um, you never know, man, who be killing these brothers. That's why a lot of these murders go unsolved. You know, if it's, especially if the brother wasn't upright, doing the right thing and in some, and, and some, and some crazy shit. And they don't want to be involved. Don't get me wrong. You know, pop, on certain levels was a good brother, but so was Bill Cosby. You know, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> so was Bill Cosby. But I mean, but at, bad the, end, people at, the, do good at, at the end of the day, you know, pop, my issue with pop, dope artist, passionate brother, but he felt like he was beyond reproach. Mm. If you see in the movie, he had a bunch of yes men around him and he didn't take anyone's advice. Because, you know, he was actually just one of those people who thought he knew it all. And Mm -hmm. I'm guilty. I've been there. Right. You know, I've been there in my life where Mm -hmm. I just, shit, you can't tell me You can't tell me shit. I know. You know what I mean? But I had to start listening to other people. You Mm -hmm. know? I had to start listening to other people. I had to humble myself. You know? And, you know, Pac just never really reached that. You know, I I didn't see him reach that as far as growth in his life. Well, he was... 25. Exactly. He didn't have a chance. He didn't. You know? He didn't. So. Right. But I sure wish his mama would have been able to get them damn masters. And and that whatever music he left behind, songs he left behind. I don't, I don't know if she ever even got that. Pop had the biggest heart, man. And and that's one of the reasons he died broke. Mm -hmm. You know, not. That's not only one of the reasons mm. he died, bro, because it was a lot of shit. We know people. the main reason why. Behind him being Suge Knight, mm-hmm. you know, which he owned all the masters <clears throat> to all his music, you know, on death row. Um, <clears throat> and, you know, those writer checks, they come in slow. So he didn't really, they say he really didn't have, they said he died broke, but the man wasn't broke. From yeah, what not, I hear, he had, a, like we know it, he had around a hundred some odd thousand dollars to his name. Yeah. Um, That's about right. That's what his mom said in that interview. Right. Mm -hmm. So he wasn't like, he didn't have millions, even though, you know, you know, obviously. But it's just that there were houses and cars that he believed. Was his. Was his. And it was all Shug's. All all the Shug's. And then not to mention in the same interview, I just mentioned, uh, 
with his mother. I think it was on CNN. It's an older interview from mm -hmm. a year, the ninety seven, the year after he passed. And she said that when um, Tupac passed, Suge Knight came to her and was, you know, oh, this and that or whatever. And um, I'm going to be here for you and whatever you need. Whatever blah, blah, you blah. need. Mm -hmm. She never seen this nigga again. Yeah. And, or those masters. She was dirty. Yeah. Okay, Suge. That's one thing about <laughs> Pac. He had Toss lots and lots and lots of women. <laughs> and lots and lots of women. He was yeah. Tupac. Yeah, he was Pac. He was a beautiful man. Yeah, man. Well, again, everything surrounding this movie is crazy. I think it just makes the atmosphere around it even better. It's electrifying. It was dope. I even ran into an old friend who I was friends with at the time when I bought All Eyes on Me. That's right. insane. I just thought about that. Bruh, I might I just blew my own damn mind. Nostalgic. Bruh. We would sit and fog my apartment up with all eyes on me blasting in my apartment, bruh. Wow, that's crazy. Tupac, I guess kind of being overly generous with the people around him, being part of the reason why his finances were in the shape that they were in when he met his untimely death, is a good segue into talking about relationships yeah. and money and why that situation tends to be so messy and unequally yoked and, and if, not only, if it were not only um you know that uh you know the fact that he got bailed out by suge right he was indebted you know, he was and indebted to suge and you <clears> know <throat> should try, try to control him because he indebted him you know and that's you know that that's another aspect of how people um, it almost sounds like indentured servitude you know can try to control you if they feel like you owe them oh yeah my parents did that to me for years the thing about it is i guess in regards to money dealing with money in with people that you are in any kind of in some way i guess intimate type of or close or loving or whatever type of relationship whether it be close friends whether it be close family extended family someone you've known for a long time whatever the relationship is significant other sometimes even causes a lot of problems between people in these types of relationships there's lots of different scenarios that these things can come up in like we talked about before the person that only calls you when they need something Right. You don't hear from them until whatever it is they need. Right. I guess they go down their mental list of people. Right. When, whatever yeah, number you fall on that list. When they're when they're out there messing up their own money or messing up their own life, you know, you don't hear from them. You right. Know? This is, you know, they're having a good time and having a you know a joyous little lifestyle. You know, it's like okay, hey, I'm over here. But you're right, living you know, it up. It's all good. All right, they I don't need you. They give you the Heisman. They give you the yeah. I don't need you. Know, you know, you know, you don't hear from them. You don't get a call or a text or when they're in need or when they want something. Here they come. You know, you get that text. You get that call, and that's or the, or the pop up, right? <laughs> or the Facebook message, or exactly, or just the conversation of oh, I've been eating ramen noodles. <laughs> Yeah. Past week, man. It's oh, man. been so hard. Yes, it's been so hard for me, and I don't know what I'm going to do next week. Meanwhile, you're smoking all the weed, drinking all the liquor. Yeah, living but it's it up. just so hard. Living it up, them, them burnt their paycheck up. That bitch gone. Like, mm -hmm. like man, you can't you know, bullshit man. a bullshitter. Come you can't on now, bullshit a bullshit. Come on now. Yeah. But yeah, I've been there. I've done that to my parents. You know, but there's people who do it to their friends, who do it to their peers. There's right. parents who do it to their kids. They try to guilt you. Oh, but well, I gave birth to is, you. you came know, out of my nut. Well, you know, I, at one point, I, I was, my pride got in the way. And I, as a man, I just couldn't really go to nobody and ask mm. somebody for shit. So right. certain situations kind of got out of hand, you know, because I was trying to handle a lot on my own or just handle things um, in um, my pride would get the best of me and I wouldn't go to anybody. But then, you know, I kind of humbled myself and, you know, and eventually, as time went on, and when I needed, I wouldn't ask no one for anything unless I needed it. Right. You know, I wouldn't go out. As you, as it should be. I wouldn't go out, though, and drink up my money, buy clothes, 
you know, take take lavish, trips, take lavish vacations, and then come back and be like, oh, I'm so please, broke. I'm so broke. I need please help. Please help me. My lights about to get turned off. You please know? help me pay my car number. Right. So you know, and and that's you know, that's, that's, that's just me. Sewing. But then there's the other side of the coin when you do ask, and people know, and people may have, they gonna talk shit about you. They Even if you're clearly in a situation where you are doing everything you can to help yourself and it's just talk. not coming together. They still gonna talk shit about you. They gonna talk shit about where you're at in They're life. They gonna talk shit about what you should have been doing, what you did. Yeah, well do. if you would have so and so and if you would have did this ten me. years ago, if you would have did this five months ago, if you would just go ahead and get your shit together. Don't live my life for and me. Do this, that and the third, you know. Right. You know, every, Meanwhile, every, I would never every, trade every, places with you. Yeah, everybody knows <laughs> to best. The, with the people saying that. No, every, everybody knows best. And then, if you do get any money, everybody knows what the fuck you should be doing with it. Exactly. Like if you, you land know. a good job and you get that salary you always wanted, right. you should. Right. You should this. You, you should, should put that. Your money you should invest. Yeah, you, you, you should, should give get me into some. real estate. You, you should know, invest in like my business. Man. Right. You should put some money towards my mixtape. Right. <laughs> you, everybody know how you should spend your money. How you should? Oh, they shouldn't have bought that. Mm. They shouldn't have bought that. They gonna be broke. I heard Mercedes is expensive to fix. Oh yeah, but although I've never owned one, yeah, and I don't know anything about a Mercedes, I'm going to advise you, a Mercedes owner, on right. your car. Okay, right. Okay, that make that looks and legit. I have a Mercedes, and I don't feel guilty about having a Mercedes or how much it costs to fix the Mercedes. That's what I want. That's what I got. I got it for a decent price. And my mechanic has a Mercedes too. And he charged me very low prices. So because and I get all my parts online. <laughs> you know, go online. If you got a luxury car, seriously, you know, I and mean, you don't want to take it to the dealership. Exactly. You know, and get charged, you know, the price DIY of the price of the as car. As you can get. The price of the car to get it fixed. You know, hey, there's sites online if you want them. You know, write in, or you know, I can tell them to you. We can put them on our blog. Yeah, yeah, we'll put them on the blog for you. But there's plenty of sites that you can go to. One, one is eBay. You know, they actually will will send you really good car parts, aftermarket part car parts. Yep. You know, um, you just got to make sure that the part fits your car. Yeah, you got to do research on your vehicle. There's a lot of other sites too. But it's worth it. That, you know, end. versus going to AutoZone, going to, you know, your local... And being um, bullshitted by the sales Auto guy. parts shop, you know, and get charged out the ass. You can go online and get, you know, and um, buy your parts, you know. Absolutely. And if you have a good mechanic who knows what they're doing, <laughs> you know, preferably a certified mechanic, um, you know, they'll, 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 you know, look out. And you'll pay probably a third of what you'll pay at a shop or... You can even sometimes take the parts that you buy offline to a shop and ask them what their rates are per hour to work on such and such vehicle. And, you know, that's a cheap way of a a frugal way of going about things as well. So, you know, it's not really about, you know, what you get and, oh, it costs this if you get that or it costs that. It's about... You know, just doing the research and knowing being smart about it. Yeah, being smart, knowing what you're doing. Learn to live you know? more simple, more frugal. There's nothing Correct. wrong with that. Right. You know? Right. That's how and rich that's, people stay rich. Guys. And that's that's another issue as far as like family. Um, you know, we as black people per se in particular live out of our means. You know, mm-hmm. that's what gets us in a lot of binds. Stunt. You know, we want to stunt. We want to flex on everybody. Talk about what bad bitches do. Yeah, man. And, you know, we want to one-up every everybody. So, you know, a lot of times that puts us in financial binds. And when we get in financial binds, who do we turn to? Friends or family. Right. For money. So, you know, it's just, Your an- tribe. It's just another way, you know, you, know you, you, you just have to live within your means, period. Mm-hmm. You it know, only makes if, sense. If you don't want to constantly beg and borrow. That's right. You have to set up and look and sit down and do a budget for yourself and say what can I afford and what I can't afford, you know. Or you're going to be borrowing money, possibly getting talked about for borrowing it. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Yeah. Look that sideways if you don't pay it back, <laughs> you know. Or if you do pay it back, whenever you do get a little extra money, 
and start studying. People are gonna be looking at you with their hands out. But Lee, look, look what I did for you. Right. You know, gimme, give gimme, give gimme. Give yeah, you remember you when know? I bought you that Happy Meal? Right. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Saying. You know, you just gotta be careful. My motto is I really don't let people borrow money. I give people money. Right. You I, might as well. You know, and that you know it's easier. And, and I you know, you know who I learned that from? I learned that from Oprah. She said mm-hmm. she wouldn't have no more friends or family if she let people borrow money. Mm-hmm. So she just you know, if you have it, you know, obviously if you have it, you probably really don't need it. Exactly. You just you know, just be wise and don't let people take advantage of you. Like Red Fox. Right. <laughs> Tupac. MC Hammer. Tupac, MC Hammer, yeah. Mike Tyson. Mike Tyson. Muhammad Ali. Yeah, just be wise and don't let people take advantage of you. Um, so, and if I feel like you're trying to guilt me, or if I got a bad feeling about you asking about something that you really don't need, mm-hmm. I'm not going to give it to you. You Period. have the right to say no. There's right. power in no. Right. I don't know why people be so afraid of And that. I would expect the same thing if it was me, from them. Exactly. If you tell me no, I'm cool. Hey, yeah. Because you treat people how you would like to be treated right. yourself. I'm, I'm cool. I'm cool well, with you telling me Personally, I feel like as far as money, number one, and you know this, my number one rule is even discussing money is fucking rude. That's bad etiquette. You do that. Et- I mean, I attribute right. that to the way I was raised. Right. So, and you just don't. It's none of your business. Right. Right. You know, right. number one, clearly you can tell when somebody's doing well for themselves. If somebody close to me needs some help, I will help them. And like you, depending on who it is, with with the kids, mm-hmm. you're paying me back. Right. Because that teaches them about life. Right. You don't want to just hand shit to your kids. When right. you know the situation that they're in really could have been avoided if they would have listened to you. Correct. <laughs> That being said, well, and, and, but and if it's pay, like a peer a, or like payback, an adult in the payback case, it's if you come to me and you say, um, I'll pay you back Thursday or I'll pay you back. If you come to me, right, but right. If you come to me and be like, man, I'm, I'm in a bind, man. Um, and things are looking really I bad. Do. I lost my job. Right. And, and you know, I, you don't see no means to end and I don't see you get no money no time soon. Why would you back. add that extra burden I wouldn't want to, to them of owing you. Them. Right. Or saying, hey, no, I, you don't hey I'm going to give this bro. to you, but you better yeah. pay me back as soon now. Nah. Yeah, that's nah. fucked up. We've been there. No. You know, so you don't want to put that. Right. Oh, no, I got And the thing about money, it, it comes, it comes so and it goes. You know, it comes and it goes. So, you know, even though, you know, some people fall in the, fall in the bind, obviously sometimes people, like, Look down on people when they're in a low place, and right? And start kicking. They people. They judge them based on what they what feel they, they have in the bank account. Correct. What they drive, what they wear, where they right. live, and that's the level of respect that right. you get from the certain type of people. That's and, the level and, of respect, and you that get. pisses me off. Right. I'm right. so disgusted by that because if if that same person were to come up, right, and then you start smiling in their face, right, calling them friend and patting them on the back. Oh, he's just That's so great. That's sickening to me. Oh, Stay I love away him so from much me. Now. Get away from me. I've seen it. If I post something that gets a lot of likes, it's not because the people love me. They're just a stranger who admires my work. So look at it in that perspective. It's mm-hmm. not getting all and caught you, up in your if feelings. You, and if you come people. out, if you come up and you yeah. start getting all kind of fanfare, people who talk about they love you are coming around, and you know. Um, <clears throat> Just wanting to be around and want to be a part and want to kind of leech off pick you. Pick your and, brain. You know, pick your brain, this, that, and the third. Mm-hmm. You know, a lot of that shit's fake. Yeah. I'm sorry, it is. Because sometimes it's people because just trying to come up off of you. As you fall, and oh, none of them motherfuckers around you. You're going to be a hot topic. Yeah. Best believe. And you're going to be all kind of busters and you losers and broke bitches. I can't have, hang around broke people. You're going to have trust issues. I can't. I can't hang with broke people. Know the game when you can be forewarned that that is what happens with money and fame, and you know you you just got to know the game and you got to pick and choose who you know you want around you. You know, and you don't always like I said as far as like you know to go back to Tupac, he had a lot of yes men around him. Mm -hmm. A lot of people with money have yes men around them. You know. You know, yeah, hell yeah, go ahead, bro. Yeah, that sounds good. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, go, 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 fuck that chick with AIDS. Oh, wow. <laughs> right? Too far. Too far. Yeah, man. Yeah, beat that nigga ass. Yeah, 
yes, yeah, man, I got your back, bro. Yeah, uh huh. Yeah, shoot those saying. two cops. Go ahead. If right. you're hard, you'll do it. Yo, you got the juice now, man. Why the issue is so messy? I think because when it's people that you have feelings for, there's emotion tied to that money. So if like you ask me, oh. I need $30 for X, Y, Z. And I'm like, no. You're going to feel some kind of way because my love is attached to that $30. You know, I think that's how people look at it. Right. If you tell them no or if you expect it to be paid back or if they're not paying you back, you know, or whatever the situation is with the money. Right. You know, in situations like that, as far as you owe me, pay me back, or I got some for you, or can I have something, whereas there's an exchange, I think there's love attached to the transaction. Again, that goes back to the type of person, just like the one on the other end, the right. person who has the problem. They are more than likely just a vapid, materialistic person. Right. So if they treat a certain family member a certain way based on where that person works or what they think their income is, where they live, what they drive, what they wear, etc. That really doesn't have anything to do with family, I think. Right. I think it has more to do with that person being back. Correct. Not You, you can be an asshole. That, 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 that's another thing about money. You know? you know, you can be a total asshole and people will flock to you because you have money. I mean, God bless the dad, but your dad was one of those people who had money, but he was an asshole, but people still wanted to come around. <laughs> you know? That just goes back to what you said in regards to how the value that people place on money. People look at it as a measurement of self-esteem, a measurement of power or intelli- intelligence or any other thing that <laughs> right. they admire. I've heard it mentioned by your dad how the people that he mi- admires sometimes or that he mentions aren't the nicest of people because at one point he even said nice things about my dad. But the one thing these people had in common was they, have they were wealthy. Right. So, you know, and then what, what that makes me think about, too, is um, the story we seen earlier about Venus and Serena's dad and his divorce and the lady is about 34 or whatever yeah, years his junior 31. that is disgusting yeah. she had his kid he's yeah. old he, himself, he was yeah. 70 he was he was in his 70s 70s when they got married he was deeper into her his 70s when she got pregnant well, and was. now he's like almost 80 when they're getting divorced so he's an old ass man and she had sex with him his and wormy that, sperm. That is she, disgusting. She got him for all that she didn't get him for. He's, you She's and his social security, blind, girl. Robbing you need to be blind. ashamed of yourself. And I think that chick that was dating my dad probably would have tried that shit. Oh yeah. But there was too many females swarming around. Right, she right, she knew right. better. It kind of boils down to that in a way. Looking at the people involved in the situation, regardless of what the situation is, it's how these individuals, what value they place on money, where they place Correct. that, um, and, what level of importance in their life that money and material things play. Right. If, if if you're the type of person, sure, money is important because you need it to survive and buy food and da, da, da. But if, if you look at it more like a tool... And yes, it's a useful tool, and it can help yeah. your life be easier to live the Correct. more of it you have. But right. once you get to a certain point, right. like you're saying, you don't need it. So, we, you know, I mean, depending on, yeah, your the person's personal view on money and what value they place on it's their how life. They, it's how they I think treat what you. it depends on. Yeah. Right. Yeah. For the love more of money. More money, more problems. I get it. I didn't at the time. I was Well, I wasn't broke. I was still under the care of my parents. When that song was out, so I was like, what do you mean? Bitch, I don't have any problems. Right. <laughs> I didn't. Because my daddy was paying all my bills. Real, yeah, real life money. hit, bitch. Right. <laughs> and then I was like, less money. I still didn't get it because <laughs> I was broke. So I was like, what do you mean, bitch? No, all my problems would disappear mm. if I had some damn money. You know? Mm. Then you get a little older and you have access to more things and then you get some money and then you begin to understand. More exactly. money, more motherfucking problems. I get right. it now, Puffy. I get it. You were trying to drop, drop them pearls of wisdom, and we just thought it was dance music. Hmm. Puffy tried to tell y'all. Like I say, hit dogs holler. 
if it doesn't apply to you, you won't feel no type of way. Right, right. But right. if it applies to you, hey, take it how you want to take it. The conclusion why is relationships in the middle of, or money in the middle of relationships, why is that such an issue? I think it just depends on the people involved and their relationship with money and material things. Right. My money. Depends the on the level of importance how you look at that it. they place money in their life, I guess, up against their relationship. And the, and the, and the crazy part about it is, you know, um, the number one call for the voice, one of the number one causes for mm. divorce is finances. Is finances. You know, you just got to try to get a handle on it and step back and look at it for what it is. It's a tool. You know, we have to make it. You know, it has to come in for us to live. Just be mindful with it and, and you know, be. I believe in being charitable. Definitely being charitable. Mm-hmm. You, you got to give back. You got to give back. Money you gotta... is currency. It's fluid. Right. That's why it's called currency. You got to keep it moving. You can't just get a hold of some money and sit on it. Correct. You got to do something with it. That's right. And the most positive, highest vibrating thing you can do is give it the fuck away to it... somebody or a group in need so that it can do its right. intended purpose. Exactly. Yeah. I'm with you. Vibrate that money high, y'all. It's not a game. This is not just a world of material and flesh and bone. It's a world of spirituality, electricity, and vibrations. Not to sound like a hippie, but uh, hey, own it. it's real. It is what it is. It's own it. That's a game. Think about it. If you know people with money who are doing negative things with their money, what kind of existence do they have? If there's like, I don't know, a rapper. Who is doing drugs and going to strip clubs and, you know, doing like all this negative shit Mm -hmm. with his money. He's not going to have a very positive life. Right. You know, but if you have somebody in the same field who perhaps might dabble in that a little bit, but also gives back in a serious about a cause and does good things with his money and takes care of his family Family, or whatever. He's going to be one of those, say, rappers or ball players that be oh mm-hmm. with in like Russell Simmons he's not a rapper but right well, you he's know okay. like Puffy's yeah. gonna be and Jay Z's gonna be they're right. gonna be like fifty sixty in some big ass house or a penthouse like rich as fuck yeah Puffy somewhere gives a lot. forever Puffy gives back a lot and he I know he does and Jay Z does too yeah. even though he's yeah. an asshole he seems like one but I'm sure he's nice to people he's close with right. But but he do a lot. Jay-Z, Jay-Z, he's stingy, about... but he do a lot. Yeah, he's yeah, he, yeah you know, uh, he get to what he what he get to. Ain't nothing wrong he, with that. It's his money. He um ain't trying to spend his money. Him, Akon is the man though. Mm-hmm. You know, I was about to speak on what Jay Z did in Africa. Jay Z went to Africa and basically gave um um villages in Africa um clean water. You know, awesome. set up clean water for them um, o- over there in some of those villages. Mm-hmm. He Akon, can't get no clean water to Detroit. Yeah, I know, right. <laughs> Yeah, so I care about nobody over here. Okay, damn y'all. But uh, Akon, we all know what he did. He basically set up um, almost um, electricity with solar panels, I believe, for over a billion people. Mm-hmm. If I'm not mistaken. I don't remember the number. I think him and him in China. He um he um brokered a deal with China, I believe. Who Akon? Yeah, he brokered a deal with China, and um, uh, you know, and now. You know, there's running electricity and, and for over, I don't want to say over a million people. I don't want to say a billion. But it was a lot of people hmm. that he helped out. That's awesome. That's good stuff. You know, like Oprah did. With his little black we got Oprah. She opened the school. She's still going to graduations. And I was her, on her, her Instagram girls, today. Her girls are graduating. Yeah, she, her and Gail was at a graduation. Oh, I'm sorry. Yesterday. I don't remember now. Child, where am I? Jay Z, Akon, Russell Simmons. Oprah, and even though they gave to all these African, you know, these African kids and African families, you know, and helped them out, I'm sure they don't want nothing from them. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? They're not going to want nothing back from them. Oh, please. You know. What? If, if you, you have, have it to give. people build themselves up first. If you have it to give, do so. And don't expect Because otherwise back. you ain't going to do nothing. Because the universe is going to repay you. You know, it's just, it's, it's, it's the laws of the universe. 360. You know, what you give is what you get. What you reap is what you sow. So, you know, if you have to give and you can, 
you know, be wise about it. But do it. Well, speaking of giving, the next topic I wanted to cover isn't the most lighthearted, but I feel it's something that needs to be discussed, even though it's relatively physically far away from us. It is very close to home for me. And that would be the um, the fire at Grenfell Towers in Brixton over in London, England. Happened last week on the 14th. For those of you who don't know, the Grenfell Towers are a low-income apartment tower in London on the poorer side of town. The tower was built, I want to say, sometime in the 60s or 70s or something like that. The neighboring areas around this tower are upper echelon people, um, wealthy individuals on either side of where this tower is located. Gentrification. Basically, they have the immigrants and the black people, the poor white people and the other minorities. You know, it's the hood. Okay, it's the projects. It's basically the projects in London in the black side of town. Okay. So... On the 14th Wednesday at 1 a.m. approximately, an apartment on the fourth floor in the Grenfell Towers caught fire when there was a malfunction in the fridge in their apartment. The fridge apartment building. In quotations. Yeah, fridge, okay. It could have been electrical issues because this place has been fraught with issues for years. There's documentations and there's news stories. There's things. Right. There's people have gone through the proper channels um, to. I don't. It's England, so I don't. I don't remember the proper names of their, you know, representatives and things like that. But you know, they went parliament. to their representatives. <laughs> right. It wasn't parliament. They were calling them. The council or somebody. Okay. Yeah, yeah. But they went to the people. You know, they've been, they did the right thing. The people mm-hmm. were just ignoring them. So, the, so these towers, maybe two to three years ago, the aforementioned rich people who lived in the surrounding areas thought the building was ugly. I think it was like a brown drab color, and they were just tired of looking at it. They complained to the people and were like, y'all need to do something. This is just ugly. I can see it from my golf course. I can see it from my lanai. You have to do something about this. We're taxpayers. We're rich. We're snooty bitch. Fix it. So since it's a low-income hood type of place... <clears throat> They took the cheap route, got this stuff that they call cladding, which is kind of like siding for those of us who live in the United States, but it's made out of, there's different kinds you can buy, a high end and a low end. The low end is highly fucking flammable. It's banned in several countries outside of England and shouldn't really be being used there. But guess what? It's just for poor people on welfare and immigrants, so who gives a shit, right? So they cover the entire building in the shit. So, last week on Wednesday, when this quote-unquote fridge caught fire, even though it was a concrete building that was designed to keep a fire within one unit, because they covered it in this basically fucking wrapping paper doused in gasoline, the building, which is 24 stories high, caught complete ablaze from top to bottom within 15 minutes. On top of that, Management did not have fire alarms installed. They did not have sprinklers installed. And on top of all of that, when the residents began to call 911 because they smelled smoke, the police told these people, do not leave your homes, put wet towels under your door and stay there. These people, this building housed between four to 700 people. It's believed that there were undocumented immigrants Living there as well. Y'all, anybody who's familiar with the hood know what it's like. When families are poor, sometimes it'd be two, three families in the house. You got to do what you got to do until everybody get on their feet. There were situations like that. There was elderly people, disabled people. Okay, 400 to 700 people people in this building. People all races as well. And just black people. No, no, no. Yeah, it was was mixed race. There was Middle Eastern. There was Asian. There was Latino. There was African, Jamaican, black, you know, white. Every people they were poor, poor, they were poor, people. poor, or like you know, on the lower end of the uh, right. yeah, 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 400 to 700 people in this building. Okay, 
I want to say the last number I heard for number of rescued people might have been about 69, if it was that high. Which means there's like 700 dead people. Let's, oh, let's, let's go back. Real quick. Mm-hmm. The people's bodies are still you know, in the building. the building. Right. Let's go back. Why would you tell people not to get out of the building and put a damn wet towel what on What in the blue hell is that? You know... I mean, there's only what, literally, probably only five to fifteen firemen that can save them in a building with four hundred to seven hundred people in it, and you telling people to put a wet towel under their door. I would think you would tell people to put a wet towel over their head and get the hell out, hell of, the out of there. Like, the that don't people, make no sense. Who, the survivors, that's what they did. And why would you put a, a highly flammable material on a building, on an old building? To make it flammable. To make, to it, make it unsafe. Because it was unsafe. a safe building before they did that, that by the way. By, with some material that's banned all over the world. Yeah. Like, sounds, and it's it like, sounds fishy. And it's almost, it's not, it, it's kind of complicated the way it is in England. It's not like banned, but it's one of the things where they like highly suggest you don't use it. But there's no like regulation that says if you right. do, you'll be fine. But and it's probably cheap. It, it is. That's why they use yeah, it. Yeah, it's probably cheap. But see, the thing that sickens me about all of this, if you start at the origin, it's because the fucking rich people didn't who want, don't even live there didn't, want to see didn't want the building that they did not live in correct. to look a certain way. So let's make it unsafe. Oh, and then the sickest part is, so the building catches on fire. These families and people, these human beings are burning alive and suffocating on black smoke after they were instructed to stay inside. The government isn't doing a damn thing. The next day, there were people on the ground. There were clothes. There were food. There was money. But guess what? It was from just everyday people. Right. There were no officials. That was the running commentary. You can look it up right now. I'll supply links yeah. under this episode. And I, I you can look it up right now. The people on the ground are like, where are the officials? Nobody's helping us. We don't know what to do. Right. We're just regular people. How do we organize this? What do we do? Nobody's helping. Nobody's right. saying nothing. And it's like they don't give a shit. It's like fuck them people. And right. like you said earlier, it's like did they do it on purpose? Did they murder these people? Yeah, that's what it's Is there something behind this? Is this a 9-11? Weird. You know, I, I mean. Fridge like fire? I said, Fridge fire. Fridge fire. Fridge fire. What? Yeah, it, it, what are they doing in England? Nine eleven on a small scale. Well, just, yeah. Just with, 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 with not all the you know uh, they're but not it, gonna, they're not trying to go to war over it. No, I don't mean that. I uh, mean they're bl- it's blatant on a small scale. Yeah. It, it's like what it's, it's, is what? You know something's not right here. Something smells like fish. You know what I mean? <laughs> and you know if you you know this basically solidifies that 9-11 was bullshit because hmm. you got a building Child. that burnt up. Hmm. Okay. And it's still standing. Heller. You know, the buildings fell in 9-11. That building is still over there smoldering. Right. Well, it might have stopped by now, but right. today, yesterday, it was smoldering. But still. it's still in the After form that it was in. Almost. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it didn't fall. It's a concrete building. Right. Well, just like... Are you trying yeah. to tell me this ghetto-ass building was <laughs> built better than the Twin Towers? <laughs> No, seriously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But they have, you know, they have standards and shit for buildings that tall. Of course. And so, I'm sure like, they why standards the for building was cool? It towers. wasn't the building; it was the shit they put on the on top of it. Correct. That's the sickening part: is the building was safe, right? Before this fight, before um, they put this um, cladding on it, it was a safe building. I think it had fires before, and they were all contained. Right. But then they put the shit on it. And and how it was described is again it was a concrete building and then it's like siding so they put it on top of the building so not only is the material that the stuff made out of flammable, um, but it, because it's like laying on top of the building, it allowed fire to get in between the material and the building and right. it just flew up and that's why the building burned up Burst in like fifteen flames. damn minutes like a wick right and a damn gas lamp right. or a candle yeah. But the building was burning. People were in there. But no, no, no. The building was burning, but it went quickly went in. You know, like if the front of our house caught on fire uh-huh. and the window, when it's hot, you know, the windows explode. Correct. So as soon as that oxygen comes in, 
that fresh air is going to suck them flames in and catch them drapes, and then it's going to spread through this damn house. Correct. You know what I mean? So that's how it kind of spreads. I'm with you. Yeah, and then it and just... And then that's when you get the hell out. Hello. You know? But, see, the thing is, it was one in the morning. A lot of these people were asleep and didn't oh, even know. Wow. There was one guy, because the fire started on the fourth floor. He was on the seventh floor playing that's, PlayStation. That one, one, in in morning. Morning. one in the morning. One in the morning, yeah. yeah he was it. playing PlayStation. And he smelled burnt plastic, you know. He's like, what does that smell? So then he got up and he went out his front door and then he saw smoke in the hall. So he was like, holy shit. Then he just started banging the door. There's a fire. There's a fire. Get up, get up, get up, get out. You know, so. But the thing is, is people were asleep. By the time you smell it, it happened so fast. Now, remember, it got the whole building, 24 flights in 15 minutes. You know what I mean? So if you were asleep. And by the time you smell it, the smoke is probably in your room. It's pitch black. You can't see. Nothing. You know what I mean? They were trapped. 24 stories. That's a lot of stairs. There was probably people trapped in the stairs, in the hall. Right. There was disabled people who couldn't walk. Right. Uh, elderly people. That's sad. Children. There was a lady who somebody had eight some, kids and only has four of them now. And somebody needs to be held accountable. Yes, which I doubt do. what happened. <laughs> okay. Rich people. But, and know. government. Because, you know, it was like a Section 8. You know what I mean? Like, over right. here, we call it Section 8 or HUD. It was, like, kind of like that. So, so government's to involved, too. They still haven't addressed these people. I don't understand. I just had to talk well, about we'll this. Because it can happen here. You never damn know. Our president is Trump. If one of these damn projects caught on damn fire or whatever happened well, to it, just like New Orleans, it reminded there, me of Katrina. there's an uprising, and people get mad... <clears throat> And start bombing shit in England. It was it's it's hard. It was hard for me to cover. It was hard for me to research to cover it today because God, I just yeah. kept thinking there's people and, and, in there. There's people in there. And when you were telling and, me about oh, it, and, and, and as far as the research, I couldn't even look at the I story. Know. Yeah, you know, I just can't. I just there's yeah, a couple it, times it, I it had to stop. Me off, and I just didn't want to go there. I didn't want my day. You know, yeah. I mean. I was able to separate, but it was just while I was, right. you know, because you listen to these people's stories, you know, and the things, you know, the people who got out of the building will, you know, because when you panic and shit's on fire and it's hot and it's smoky, you can't breathe. You're trying to survive. That's like your human instinct kicks in and you just, you go for yours right. and they made it outside. And then, you know, when you make it out and you're safe, that's when you kind of click back and they would turn around and their mom would be gone. You know, their son, brothers, whoever would be gone. And then they'd be like, oh, my God, where's so-and-so? And And then by the time they turn around and look at the building, it's complete. Yeah. That's the part that killed me inside. That could not have been me. I would die. Right. You know, if that was me and I, and my daughter and my son and you, I'm, I don't have eyes on you and this building is burning like that. And I, oh my God. You know, and then they showed people in the windows like flashing flashlights doing the SOS and Morse code. Like I'm here, like all the way at the top. You know, they didn't get out. They didn't get out. If they're on the 24th floor, that shit was tough. This shit needs to be talked about. It should not be swept under the rug. It should not stop. Being, it's in England and we're in the U.S., but geez, man, these are human damn lives. And their government is just turning their freaking back on them? While the whole world watch these people go up in flames, literally, and families be torn apart. People begging and pleading. They don't even have a list with people's names. So people don't, people are technically missing, which everybody yeah, kind of is like, you know, they're from. dead. You know, but they don't. You yeah, know, when it's your relative, what, you hold out hope. Seem more like a, some, <clears throat> some some kind of sinister yeah, some contrived, shit. Some setup. Yeah, you know, who knows, bro? Who knows? It might have been a big ass sacrifice by fire. The only thing that gives me any comfort is all of those people are in a much better place right now. But my heart goes out to the people they left behind. Because not only do they have loved ones they lost, they have this traumatic ass experience to live with. They're going to need counseling. (sighs) Big time. My God. They'll probably have survivor's guilt and shit. Post-traumatic stress for sure. Oh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, this shit definitely affected me. I don't know why it personally touched me the way it did because I don't I'm not from England I don't really I had a couple friends and stuff 
from there, but I'm pretty sure they didn't live there. So it's not like I knew anybody specifically there, but just maybe the human factor, the fact that, you know, I've been poor, I've lived in public housing, not so much public housing, but like hood housing, right? stuff like that before. I'm pretty much in that tax bracket now that if something happened, the government probably wouldn't give a fuck about me because we've right. seen the same thing or at least similar again with Katrina. Correct. Even though our government did, they just dragged their ass, but they did eventually come and quote unquote help them or whatever the hell the crazy shit they did, but they showed up. Right. These people, they government still, mum's the word, bitch, they haven't heard from no one. Yeah. And this was last Wednesday. And we already know who's the power. The lizard queen. <laughs> the lizard queen and, you know, a bunch of old pasty-ass sure. white men, um, you know, that look, look look like lepers and shit that mm-hmm. basically are running the country, you know, and have no sense of morality or None God or, you know, they try to act like they do, but... Again, they don't. It's an act. It's an act. Those people are right. devil worshippers. Correct. They devil worshippers, and just like in American Horror Story Coven, where that chick was gutting her slaves and using their pancreas or whatever to put on her damn face to keep looking young, these bitches do that. That's why there's missing children. And I might sound crazy to whoever, bitch, but you explain it. Explain it to me another way. Then make that shit make sense to me. That it's not that. All these damn missing damn people, missing children. You trying to tell me they're not doing... I'm not trying to say they wiping blood on their face. But I think it's some scientific lab shit. Right. That they're doing something, bitch. Don't try to tell me. Oh, then yeah. that pizza stuff came out and all them pictures of them children. Bitch, get by. Right. Call me crazy if you want, bitch. Explain all that to me and make it make sense then in some other way. Otherwise, yeah. I'm going to keep damn believing it. They're doing something. That's why that bitch still alive. She's like 90-something years old. Oh, the queen. Yeah. Right. Why they live so long? Like that other dude, the one that just died. <laughs> why they live so long? Bro, why they live so long? For real. The dude that just, what was he? Rockefeller? Is that who just died? Yeah, I think That old Rockefeller. nasty looking. Yeah. That nigga, well, how was the... I think he had like five heart transplants. How old? Okay, bitch, like, what the fuck? <laughs> This nigga was just getting the fucking bionic man. No oh, old nasty ass. That nigga looked dead. Like he was already dead. Yeah, and like you know dead. what I'm saying? Like he like he was rotten. But they had him like on some shit. Right. Where he was like animated. Right. Yeah, this shit was nigga, crazy, bro. Brain injection. I don't trust them, bro. Like, I might not really buy into all that Illuminati, like the way they explain it on YouTube, but there is something going on, and then people are onto something. They just right. go too it far left. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But yeah. there's something going on, and I think it's spiritual, and I think there's witchcraft and spells and blood and sacrifices right. and shit. I think it's real. Dark energy. And all that fucking in the booty shit and fucking goats and yeah. eating shit. I think they do all that. I believe that. Dark Sorry. energy. But not sorry, nigga. Yeah. I ain't sorry. Y'all nasty. It's, it's knowing how to summon it. Y'all nasty as fuck. That Pizza Gate stuff. Y'all nasty, bitch. Mm-hmm. Y'all nasty. Hmm. Y'all going to hell. Child, yes. But my heart really goes out to all of those people over in Brixton that were affected directly, indirectly, however, by Grenfell Towers. Um, the survivors, the people who passed, my heart breaks to think about their final moments. That's a fucked up way to go. Terrible. I feel awful. God bless them. I hope these people get some kind of justice. We might not see how it'll happen right now, but that don't mean it won't. God can do anything. And God don't like ugly. And this, my friends, is ugly as hell. Okay? Ugly. Ugly. Don't turn your heads to this. Just because it's overseas doesn't mean it don't matter. Don't make it less of a thing. Pay attention. Look around you. Shit happens in patterns. Yeah. Just because it's over there don't mean it can't happen here. Just because it happened over there in the ghetto don't mean it can't happen here in the burbs, baby. Right on time for this karma letter. Let's bust this out real quick so we can get the hell up out of here. T- 
today our karma letter comes from here we go again we're gonna get through this we're gonna get through this dear Utre, i hope you can help i broke up with my longtime boyfriend a little more than two years ago i had a great year of being single and hanging out with friends after we broke up and then i moved to boston from the west coast to start fresh with a new job and new surroundings i've been online dating off and on Sometimes I get a little overwhelmed or discouraged, so I get offline in order to in order to refocus. I would say I have a healthy amount of self-confidence and am fairly mature. About two weeks ago, I met this guy on Match who is new to Boston the way I was a year ago. We'd been messaging slash texting for about two weeks, so I invited him to an impromptu hangout session with friends. The next day, we stuck to our original first date plan of visiting the ICA and having a lunch brunch. We were affectionate, but not in a vulgar way. It felt really nice. Anyway, we had a really great time and had great chemistry, so naturally, I caved when he put the moves on me and we had sex. Three times in one (laughs) afternoon. Ooh. All right. I'm pretty comfortable with my sexuality, and I enjoy having sex, so when I feel comfortable enough to have sex with someone, I just do. No regrets, and definitely none of that is it too soon mental anguish. Okay, girl. The problem is that later that night, after I got home, I saw he was online now, on match. Paranoia overwhelmed me. How could he be online already? Never mind the fact that I was too, just to see if he was online. We had talked about how much he wanted to explore Boston with me and get to know me better and put the kibosh on match so he could focus on me. The next day, I sent him a sexy text, which I never do, but we had such a good romp in the sack that I didn't think anything of it. And he responded that he had a headache and was starting to get sick, but that he'd feel better the next day and see me as planned for dinner. I don't know why, but I was emotion- I emotionally snapped. <laughs> okay, I uninvited him to dinner the following night and then sent a snappy text back. <clears throat> I think I felt rejected that I had put myself out there and went in, sent a sexy text message, sent a sexy text. Oh, my God. Put myself out there and sent a sexy text message, but got such a robotic, non-emotional, non-sexual response and was all of a sudden blind to the good things I liked about him. And in his defense, my text was sexy, which he probably interpreted to me and I wanted to see him that night, which actually is not what I meant since I knew I'd be seeing him the next night. Girl, you're rambling. My perspective is that he came on really strong, really quick. He talked about me helping him shop for Boston winter clothes, helping him with furniture. Since in my profile, I mentioned interior design as a hobby. Da, da, da. I was frozen out. I called him the next morning. I was surprised he actually picked up the phone and he tried to explain, but he said it was too much for him. He ended the call with, I'll call you later, but obviously he hasn't. And I haven't contacted him again because I'm just not that desperate. However, I thought about this guy every day since and I regret my overreaction. Would it be ridiculous for me to reach out to him again? I've read so much about dating and I buy into he's just not that into you for when a guy does not contact me, but is it over? If so, fine. I concede and I've learned my lesson again. If I do reach out, how do I do so in a way he would hopefully respond to? Please help. Signed, here we go again. Number one, girl, you are too long-winded. That was too much to read. But first thing that stands out to me just to jump the gun here, is in the closing of your letter, you went back and forth, back and forth. You understand that that you know this nigga don't like you, but you like, but I want to call him back. But I don't want to call him back. I know he don't like me, but I want to call him back. And what should I say when I call him back? Girl, look, he don't like you. You acted like a total spaz hat. You had sex with this dude one time and then started acting like his wife. Okay? You freaked him out. He seen you, you. You exposed yourself. You showed him who you really were too soon. And he was like, bye. Basically. Sorry, girl. Fix that in yourself. Number one, you can't expect to be stable when it comes to meeting guys if you fuck people that soon. That's too many penises and too many energies going up in you. And that's going to make you unstable in the mind. That's why you fucking flipped out when you seen he was online. Did it ever occur to you that maybe he went online to see if you was online, dummy? I'm just saying. If you got something to say to her, you can say it. (laughs) 
what stuff what stuff out of me was I fuck guys with no regrets. Okay. When I want to have sex. I just I'm a have hoe sex. without conscience. So, but you just contradicted yourself because you had mm-hmm. sex with this guy and you fell what head over heels. You know what I'm saying? Because he beat the whole walls loose and <laughs> that day three times. Like, come on, man. So, listen. Some advice to the ladies. No matter how good the sex is when you first meet a guy, don't let it make you emotional. Don't get all clingy. Don't get all, uh, you know, let him still chase you. You know what I mean? Because that's what guys expect. You know, a lot of dudes are young, especially at this age. They're young and they're players. They move to a new city. They're looking for some new pussy. He's looking to settle down. Right, you know, he just got he there. He just got there. Damn. You know what I'm saying? And you probably pulled out all the tricks because you wasn't, you know, you you fell in love. Because you're thirsty. You, you know come off saying? as thirsty. You and that's another thing. You can't pull out all the tricks in like a week, you know, on this The first group. time y'all had you sex? Can't be, you can't be eating booty and shit like in a week, Tossing breath. salads? You know what I'm saying? You Damn. Can't, you, can't, you can't be swallowing balls, nigga, and letting the nigga skeet all over you and all kind of weird shit. Okay, like, man. Like, you know, say some of that shit. You can't like, you squirt know, on man. the first date? Oh, man. You know, first thing niggas do, tell their homeboys, hey, oh, you won't believe this shit, bro. Like, who, what, 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 what dude want to make a chick his wife or his main lady? When she swallowed your dick balls and licked your ass all at the same time, in the same Within move. a week. Yeah. Come on, dog. Come on. You didn't gave him everything. I gave them all. You don't gave yeah. it all to him. And then you, know you texting them the next day. Yeah, I want to swallow your dick again. And yeah, whatever you texted him. Sending them sexy pictures. That might have scared him I usually don't do this. You're lying. Okay, bitch. Really? That's a lie. I really, I don't liar. usually. Girl, all the stuff you wrote, just like that Craigslist ass or ad that you showed me or whatever ad that was, whenever you see them ads where it's like long as hell, you know oh, the yeah. person's full of shit. Oh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I yeah. think you're full of shit. Saying extra shit. Here we go again. Like, oh, I usually don't do this. I usually don't do this. You're a liar. Girl, good night. Yes, you do. You're a liar. Yes, you do. Okay? First of all, don't give it up so easy. Mm. Second of all, if you do give it up. She's talking about I just do it, no regrets, and, I, and definitely none of that. Is it too soon? Mental anguish. Girl, you just anguished yourself. You fucked him and got home and see, let me see if he online. You lying to yourself. You cur. And you like, cur. What was you doing online back on match? How we know to see you if he no was match. online, that's what she said. To see Matching if he was up online. with another nigga. Okay, man. You know what I'm saying? We Is your balls on loose enough? Lucy? Yeah, no, I don't want to. Them balls was probably too loose. Mm. You feel what me? wall? Ain't no walls, bitch. And if Buddy didn't, hasn't contacted you back yet, you know. There was no walls. That's why he didn't call yeah, you back. Yeah, he you had know. no walls. Man, every man know. likes a challenge. Every man wants exactly, some walls. Exactly. Every man wants some walls. Why you think niggas always talk about... Hitting your walls all the time because they like walls, girl. Gee, exactly. Two and two together. Well, um, here we go again. <sighs> no shade, girl. We just keeping it real because we're your friends and we're gonna be honest and tell you. Or I'm gonna tell you how I would tell my home girl. Like, girl, I'm, I'm gonna tell you. I'm gonna call it spade to spade. You being a hoe. Yeah. Okay. You be a hoe witch. I'll say you being a hoe witch. You be a hoe witch. I would tell my sister, my daughter, or someone close to my family, a niece. Or, or whatever, you know, if they were at that age, how men are and how they handle things. And if you give it up too quick and you... They're like, oh, she's a disposable bitch. Like a right, swiffer. right. And you, you, you know, giving up all, all the tricks on the first night. Huh. Come on. Nah, bruh. Super the first thing we value think, meals. Who else she doing this shit to? You know, or not even who else. And then, and then I bet she do this shit to everybody. everybody. This and bitch a hooker. You, then you come out the mouth and be like, "Oh, you know, I ain't never did this to nobody else." Yeah. Like, say that shit. Say that shit. That's just opposite day. You nobody, know, <laughs> nobody believes you. You don't even believe you. You know that shit a lot. Stop. Ain't no nigga gonna believe you. You lying to him, yourself, and you lying to us by That's writing right. us this three paragraph motherfucking Aaliyah four page letter. I just had sex with no regrets. Don't call him because he don't want to get with you or talk to you. Take a moment and sit down, maybe even lay down. And, you know, think about what you're doing and how it's working out for you right now. Because to me, it doesn't look like it is. Let your coach tighten up a little bit, you know? Yeah. Go get some um, some tightening cream. Let it tighten up a little bit. Ciao. Or just relax. Just sit down and relax. No regrets. Let it cool off. That's right. Sit it on the charger and leave it alone. 
Yeah, he probably he probably saw your friends with months too. Damn. Uh, yeah, we had we went out and we went out with some friends and yeah, he probably saw some, some dicks, of your friends. Yeah. Tossed some salads. Didn't give a fuck about it. Because you know. YOLO. You only live once, huh? Yo yo ho, you only ho once. Yeah. Yo ho. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Girl, get it together. I don't know. I'm not good at talking to hoes, so I don't know what to say to you. Mm-hmm. I mean, is it like a depressed person where you shouldn't tell them, oh, cheer up, because they're you depressed? Know, well, you can't tell a hoe, just stop being a hoe? What do you I say? I wouldn't advise anyone to be a whore, personally. I wouldn't advise it, but if you want to be a whore, make some money. Be a stripper. At least. You know what I'm saying? Get paid. At you know? least, Get girl. paid by the mm-hmm. hour. $200 an hour, you know what I'm saying? The fucking nigga, whatever, you know? Bunny Ranch, Nevada. Right. I think if we start a movement, we can actually get prostitution legal across the country, like marijuana and gay marriage. Yeah, 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 but you know. I think that would cut down on pedophiles and shit. If it, you could just openly get a prostitute and not be judged. Right. Bitch, it's sex. I'm single. I can't get no right. pussy. Would you fuck me? Okay, then. Shut the fuck up and let me get this hooker. Correct. <laughs> right. Shit. You know? Right. It's not like they're being forced. I'm not talking about the, the fucking sex trade where they kidnap teenage girls. They need their dicks cut off. But grown-ass, sexy, relatively, women, sometimes they are, I guess, but who are like, bitch, I want to be a fucking hooker. Fuck being a porn star. Like, yeah. some might want it. Some they want the fame. Want but sex is sex. Money yeah. money. And, you so, know, some people are just sexual genius. And that happened to them as a child. They just want to be they, fucked they real good. They just want to be by strangers. Yeah. But, bitch, do shit. that. And get, because, listen, they everybody paint. has a passion. Why am I applauded if I want to paint pictures or take pictures or do a podcast? or right. Oh, that's awesome. Yeah, good luck to you. If I want to be a fucking hooker, bitch, go ahead. That's your passion? That's what you're good at? Hey. She like to make men come. I am man. not shading you. You do she you. Like, she like to make men Be a hooker. Come. If everybody's you know, consenting, everybody agrees with like, the rates, you right. know, you're okay with being choked, spanked, you're okay with swallowing come or not. Whatever. No whatever booty hole or whatever your rules yeah, are. There'd be something for everybody. Exactly. You know what I'm saying? You do the you. The only people that would probably be uh, against it is uh, old married women. Because they know their husband. <laughs> yeah. Ooh, no well, I mean, Ethel, you know, you see my Father's Day me- message, Father's Day head, it's, it's the most precious gift. Yeah, I mean, you know, that, 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 that's what would probably be, um, come on, trying Ethel. to ban it in Congress and shit. It's us against the hookers, girl. You just gotta watch some porn and learn some tricks, girl. Come on, that shell. You gotta just be a hooker for your man. Be a hooker in, in your home. Yeah. I mean, just for a little while. For about you, 45 you know, minutes. Three hours. Be a hooker. I mean, uh, you know. At the and end by of the be day, a hooker, I mean make sure he pays you, girl. At the end of the day, you know, you know the these uh, call girls, black books, and you know Heidi Fleiss, and you know they didn't give a lot of names up, but they said it was mostly married, professional. Everybody knows that. Congressmen. Yeah. Doctors, lawyers. Because single men can easily go out and be like, hey, girl, let me holler at you. Let me holler at you. Because they're single. Married men can't do that because your wife homegirls here, like, them hoes be everywhere. And they're going to tell. Right. So you be discreet and you call back page or go online to back page or you call Heidi Fleiss or whoever. Yeah, whoever. And be like, I want a five foot seven brunette with a double D. Yeah. Titties, likes to give throat. I like a bitch with small, pretty feet. I like a bitch who likes anal. I want her to I jack me with my feet. Just suck my toes or yeah, suck her toes. Yeah, I got a, I got Rub a grand. feathers on my I nipples. I got a band, bitch. I got a thousand dollars for Capri it. Sun down my booty crack. All that. I was singing the national anthem. I'm into that. It makes me come hard. Well, yeah. we. I don't know where we went, but I hope she got what she needed. Um, Miss, what's her name? Here we go again. And then she she says again. Again. I learned my lesson again. No. No. Again. You didn't learn it the first time. How are you going to learn a lesson again, bitch? You can only learn something once. What the fuck? Yeah, then you he, got all he actually picked up the phone and said, Bitch, bye. This is too You're a fucking psycho hoe. Because she called him. No, she sent a snappy text back. <laughs> 
child. Girl, you forget that. Know, up. Leave that man alone. Back. No, you shouldn't. He don't want to hear from you. He don't want to talk to you. No, you should not call him You fucked that up and you know it. That's why he cool wrote off, that shit does. And you wasted all the time typing yeah, this shit. Let that shit cool off. I had, I had to read it. Go get tested. Now you owe me. Now we got beef. All right, girl. Yeah. 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 Shit was a waste of brain cells. Kind of, sort of, but it was entertaining. So. Yeah. Get paid for that pussy bubble. Yeah, you might as well, girl. You going While you it? still got walls. If you have walls, that's oh, debatable because right. he stopped talking to you for reading. Yep. Yeah, obviously, it wasn't that great. All right, guys. Get, get so... your dome game right. <laughs> <laughs> Tighten them walls, girl. They got vaginal rejuvenation surgery. Yeah, so, reflex, baby. You know, practice. Practice makes perfect. It really does. So if you'd like your karma letter read on the air, you probably won't after we just gutted this bitch. But don't write us no shit like that. But if you want your karma letter read on the air, write us at Utre at 7 dimensioncom Oh. <laughs> Biggie. Turn my headphones on. Turn my headphones Turn my mic up. A little bit more. Yeah. A little bit more. Biggie. <laughs> <laughs> Oh, oh, Biggie. Kicking the door, waving the 4 4. All he said was, Papa, don't hit me no more. Oh. <laughs> Big- <laughs> Biggie. <sighs> it's about that time. <laughs> All right, guys. Well, that wraps up another episode of Utre for this week. Remember, you can catch us every Thursday on iTunes, SoundCloud, and Google Play. Or you can listen direct at podcast.7thdimension.com. Be sure to tune in next week for an all-new episode. Be easy, guys.